Hey, I'm Mark Stevens, author of Government Indicted, and the radio show is called The No State Project, of course. And just a quick update for the same old lie world tour. It's back in Scottsdale today. It's March 25th, 2014. I screwed up two things, but that's part of the No State Project. I me screwing things up. Not, not too bad. I didn't realize uh, until I got there that there was no public meeting, so I wasn't going to be able to put uh, my issue on, you know, to vote for, uh, to become an agenda item to be investigated. Um, and um, I have a tech issue that I'll discuss in a few minutes. Uh, but hey, what's the No State Project without a small tech issue? Well, I don't know, this is kind of a big one, but it's never going to happen again. I, got, I told my wife, I got to stop learning how to use this new equipment this way by screwing everything up, but. Uh, anyway, I did not get to do, you know, it wasn't a public comment, wasn't able to do that. So I figured I would talk to the city manager, uh, Mr. Fritz Baring, regarding uh, the call with Alan Rodbell. And he asked how it went. I said, ah, it didn't, it didn't go well. And at near the end of the talk, because they had to get to the city council meeting, I had very limited time. Uh, you know, he had said he was sorry that it wasn't very productive. I disagreed. I said, well, it was productive and that we have another police officer who doesn't have any evidence that the Constitution laws apply just because I'm physically in Scottsdale or wherever it happens to be. So I said, I have just more evidence to show that the laws are being applied by people who have no evidence So and, and that we have more evidence of bad faith. So in that regard, it was very productive. I, don't, I know I'm not going to get the evidence. It's just a matter of uh, I'm proof showing that they don't have any good faith. Uh, so... What we discussed also had to do with the insurance and going, you know, and having an insurance investigation. Now they do have their own risk management, and this is when I mentioned that it was a Katie Calloway who gave me kind of a veiled threat, I guess. She says, "And I caution you, sir, to guard your statements." And statements she didn't like that I was saying that the judges were colluding or with the prosecutors and the judges. Well, that's 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 what they're doing. And so he, uh, Fritz had told me that I need to speak with Jeff Nichols, who's the city treasurer, who risk management answers directly to him. So if they're going to be an issue, get together with, with Jeff Nichols, the treasurer, and then he would be able to help. Uh, so after I spoke with Fritz, there was some, still a few minutes before the meeting started. I, fa- I went down just on a whim to see if this Jim Nichols, the treasurer, was there. It turns out he sits at the same table across from the city council at these meetings so I got to, I started talking to him and it turns out he's answerable to Mr. Washburn I forget his first name this city attorney the one don't want to talk to me so I told him what happened I thought it was a subtle threat from one of his you know one of his employees Miss Calloway he said he'd look into that he said that ultimately any investigation into the judges and prosecutors and the police would have to be cleared through his counsel of course Mr. Washburn so while we're talking about this, Mr. Washburn sits down. Now, previously his office, I've never had any communication with him before other than uh, leaving messages and emails and you know faxes. And his office, someone in his office said that they, under no circumstance, they will not talk to me. They will not speak to me. And they don't want me speaking to staff. All right. So I figured he's sitting down right there. I'm a journalist. Let me ask him some questions. So I asked him, could I ask you some questions and record it for, for the, you know, because I do the radio show? And he said, absolutely not. But then he would speak to me. Oh, okay. So I have my notes. I don't have to, you know, it's nice to record it, but all right, you don't want to record it. We understand why he doesn't want to record it, because they don't have any evidence. They're acting in bad faith. They're a gang of killers, thieves, and liars. They don't have any evidence. So why would he want to be recorded not being able to answer a simple question? So... This leads to my, uh, you know, my little tech issue, though. Uh, he saw, I'm asking him, I ask him first, you know, the usual. Do you operate on the presumption that the Constitution laws of the state of Arizona and the city of Scottsdale apply to me just because I'm physically in Scottsdale? And he agrees. That's, you know, it's basic common, you know, that's the way they operate. You're here, our laws apply, we have jurisdiction to do whatever the hell we want. We, you are our bitch in a sense. That's what jurisdiction means. You do what we tell you or we kill you. And of course, what just happened this week in, in Albuquerque is proof of that. You don't do as we say, we will kill you. And Because um, you know, police don't ask you to do anything, they're telling you. And there's always a penalty of death if you don't do that. And if God help you, if you resist, you'll wind up dead. But that's what they want. I mean, they get, you know, they're adrenaline junkies. They get off on this stuff. So anyway... 
I ask him the follow question, do you have any actual evidence to prove that? That's a yes or no question. I'm not asking for the actual evidence, just, hey, do you have any actual evidence to prove this? And he says, I'm not going to answer your question. Well, do you have any evidence or not? Yes or no? I'm not going to answer your question. Why? Do you not have any evidence? Why won't you answer the question? He's, he, he says, now he insults me. He says, this is going to sound very familiar, Mark. Or sir, whatever. I'm not going to answer your question. Well, you don't have to insult me. Well, I'm not insulting you. You're not listening to me. No, it's a different question. I already know you don't want to answer the question yes or no if you have any evidence. I just want to do it. It's a follow-up question. That's kind of the way journalism works. My follow-up question was, do you, you know, why don't you want to answer such a simple question? I said, if you're under the presumption that the constitutional laws apply to me, and that is the basis of your job when you're prosecuting us, when you're stopping us and you think there's jurisdiction to do whatever the hell you want to me, is it arbitrary or not? Do you have any evidence to prove it? Or is it just a gun? Is it just a willingness to kill us? That's why I say in government indicted, a law is just another excuse for a cop to kill us. So he refuses. He asked me why I'm asking him these questions. Because I don't think you have any evidence. So now he tries to get slick on me. And he and he tries to accuse me of a logical fallacy. So what he says is, it's another novel position that you have. You think that just because I won't answer your question or we don't answer your questions, you think that that's evidence that the laws don't apply? Well, it's a logical fallacy. I think he was talking, uh, I think it's uh, an argument from ignorance. And, uh, and I, and, wow, you're trying to use the logical fallacy line on me. Oh, okay, I, I get it. That's, uh, you know, and I told him, look, I can argue logical fallacy. I know him as well as anybody. I mean, certainly you're not going to, you know, that's not my, my position is, and I can, pr I can prove that independently. It's in the Constitution laws are just what you say. And just because you say it, it's a non sequitur, it's a logical fallacy, to say that just because you say these laws apply to me doesn't mean they do. There's no evidence beyond your say-so. It's an appeal to authority or an appeal to, you know, to the stick. So uh, he refuses, and he wants to ask me more questions. So this is where, you know, and I'm standing there with the camera thinking oh, I'd love to be able to film this. He... Um, I said to him, look, I'll, I'll answer your questions. No problem. I, I can do that. I said, but I'm going to record it. And he refuses. I said, no, 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 no. I don't have to record you and put you on video, but I'm damn well going to audio record because you're asking me, you want to, if you're going to ask me questions, I'm recording it. So he was all right with that. So I turn on the camera, but I'm very new to this equipment. And um, I know. And I know now that there's a, but what I, because I didn't think I was going to get to record. I, I remember I got like a minute before they're going to start the city council meeting because you know I can see that. So Mr. You know he's sitting in front of me, but I'm standing kind of just, and I can see they're getting ready to start. So I got to get as much as I can, and I'm not thinking. I got to turn the microphone on. Well, I wasn't thinking that. So I didn't turn the mic on, and unfortunately, I did not get any of the audio. Hey, but what's the No Stay Project without an audio issue? I guarantee I'm not going to make that mistake again because I have the, the push to, you know, the well, you can keep this a thing on there so once you start talking, it's automatically on. So I won't make that mistake again. So he just absolutely refuses to answer the question. I said, just answer the simple question. I said, why can't you answer a simple question? He won't do it. So I said, well, let me ask you this. If I wanted to speak to your senior prosecutors, you're not going to allow. He says, I will direct them not to speak with you. I want to I wanna just point out, and he also, when he, 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 we, I got him to confirm, he will order the city treasurer not to speak to me either. And not to, you know, okay, so think about this for, for a second. Why would a guy who believes with all his, you know, it's what he does every day, he absolutely insists that the laws apply to us just because we're physically in Scottsdale. Why won't he say yes or no if he has evidence to prove that? If this man was asking in good faith, why wouldn't he just say, you're damn right I have evidence, you little jerk. What kind of journalism is this? But he won't even say yes or no whether he has evidence or not. So uh, what I tell him is that one of the reason, things I'm showing is it's not just that there's, you, you don't have any evidence. You don't, you're not acting in good faith. And, it's, and, and my main audience is, well, it's not the city attorney. 
it's it's people like you watching this. It's people who live in Scottsdale or travel through there, and so people who live other places that that see the same thing, like with John in Minnesota. It's the victims. It's giving the victims tools so that they know that they can see in advance. These people have no evidence. And encourage more people to not comply with them. Don't pay them. Don't pay their salary. And let, at least put it to them this way. I'm not going to pay you until you put the evidence on the table that you have any jurisdiction over me at all, other than a willingness to kill me. But then again, like I wrote in Government Indicted, don't mistake your willingness to kill me as evidence you have jurisdiction over me. Is that all it comes down to? And, and that's what these questions are doing, is, is uncovering the gun in the room and showing that they are nothing more than a gang of killers, thieves, and lives. Yeah, they may wear a suit and tie. Yeah, I'll give them that. It doesn't mean they're any less a criminal. So, if anyone doubts, if anyone thinks that I'm engaged in a logical fallacy, look, we've got plenty of evidence on the website. Fritz Bering admitted directly he didn't have the evidence. Uh, I've, I've had, a, you know, the Melbourne police. Is that evidence that the Constitution laws don't apply? No. The evidence that the Constitution laws apply is because here you've got a written instrument and my physical location. And that's not how you prove a written instrument applies. What it is showing is that these people have no conscience. They don't care. They know they have no evidence. And even after we confront them, they continue doing what they're doing. It's like someone in, in uh, and I'll have a call to shame about this, had someone in Canada today, Corrine, with the, with the Canadian Revenue Agency. She said, even if we can't give you evidence, we are not going to stop. So I had to ask, are you this antisocial in your personal life? Which she didn't think that that had any relevance. I guess she kind of missed that. So if you think that you have evidence to show that written instruments, things like constitution and so-called laws, apply to me or someone else just because we're physically in Scottsdale, please, call the show. We're live every Saturday from 4 to 7 Eastern Standard Time. You know, you're more than welcome to call in with your evidence. And I mean evidence, not civics crap and not all other people like that. You know, uh, I want actual evidence that this written instrument applies to me because I'm in a, in a certain physical location. And I don't mean the circular garbage, the code applies because the code applies. Facts, proof, empirical, verifiable proof, facts. We're, uh, again, Most Day Project Live every Saturday. I'm happy to set you up as a guest. We'll even pre-record it so we don't have commercial breaks to break up your, 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 your presentation. And my name is Mark Stevens, author of Government Indicted. You can get a copy at markstevens.net. And again, if you've got evidence the Constitution laws apply to me just because I'm physically in Scottsdale or Arizona or Toronto, wherever, please call the show and present your evidence.